In this episode, we're going to build a Reddit-style upvoting downvoting system using Angular 4 and Firebase. In this example, we have a collection of items already in the database, and we also have Firebase authentication set up in our app. If you're new to Firebase authentication, I've added a couple links in the description with more details. The first thing we need to think about is modeling our data in the Firebase NoSQL database. Our database needs to answer two fundamental questions. What is the user's vote for a given item? And what's the total vote count for a given item? We can answer this question by creating a collection based on the unique ID of the items. For each item ID, we save the user IDs that have voted on that item. This way we can query an item and see if the users voted on it. And we can also tally up the collection of users under an item to get the total vote count. Let's start by building the service. The first thing we need is the Firebase object observable for a specific item ID. We also need the user to be able to cast their vote by updating the item object in the database. The update user vote function will send a new key value pair to the item in the database, with the key being the user's ID and the value being the value of the vote, which can be either a negative one, zero, or a one. Now we can build the upvote button component. Our component will accept a couple of input values. Since this is normally going to be a child component of an item, we can go ahead and pass it the item ID as well as the user ID. In the component TypeScript, we have just a generic component, but we're also going to be using the input decorator. And we've also imported Lodash as well to help us facilitate the vote count, which you'll see later on. So we have input variables for the item ID and the user ID. And we have a couple of number variables, one that represents the total vote count and one that represents the current user's vote. During the ng on init lifecycle hook, we can subscribe to the Firebase object observable from our service. The observable itself is going to emit the upvotes, and we can use that to figure out what the user's vote is and also get the total vote count for an item. And we add a conditional statement when checking the user vote because it's possible the user is not logged in when viewing an item. An added feature you might consider is redirecting the user to a login page when they click the upvote button and they're not logged in. In this example, I'm using the Lodash library to put all the object values into an array and then get the sum of that array. Doing the same thing in JavaScript would require a lot more code, so we're going to keep it concise and readable. So now we can build two separate functions, one for upvoting and one for downvoting. These functions are identical, the only difference being a positive one for an upvote and a negative one for a downvote. We also want the user to be able to cancel their vote by just clicking the same button again. So we do this by checking to see if the user vote is already an upvote or a downvote. And if it is, then we set the vote value to zero, which will essentially reverse their vote. We can do this in one line using a JavaScript ternary operator to replace a multi-line if-else statement. The final step is to end the subscription once the component's destroyed to avoid introducing memory leaks into the app. We can do this with the onDestroy lifecycle hook. In the template, we create two arrow icons that handle upvoting and downvoting. We simply find the upvote and downvote functions to the click event on these buttons. In order to show the user whether or not they've upvoted or downvoted for an item, we color the upvotes green and the downvotes red. We can do this with the ng class directive, which will add an active class to the item if its upvote is either greater than zero or less than zero. 
Now if we go into our app, we can see that we have a fully functional upvote downvote system. On the left, we have the app itself, and on the right, we can see it's updating the Firebase database in real time. That's it for this episode. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. For just a few bucks a month, you'll get access to exclusive content as well as free one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.